So where did the idea to paint Elvis on velvet come from? Well, many people, including those in the art world, think of velvet paintings as kind of tacky. Well, we're going to introduce you to one Tucson artist who's trying to change all that. Meet Diane Bombshelter. Well, I, I've always had a kitschy sensibility. Believe it or not, velvet is a valid artistic medium with roots in the mid-century. My, my main influence on why I wanted to paint on black velvet was Edgar Lee Tag, and he painted in the late 50s, and he did mostly Tahitian women. Um, he did some men too, but he lived in Tahiti, and uh, that's basically how black velvet painting really got popular, was because of him. The other influence would be from Mexico. Uh, you know, the, a lot of people recognize like the Elvises, and, but I think that is another reason why black velvet painting became ubiquitous in the 50s and 60s, um, mostly from, I would say, the Polynesian paintings and the Mexican paintings. Working on black velvet is the exact opposite of a white canvas. You paint highlights using the velvet as shadows. The velvet also provides a unique depth and texture. I would say there's two camps. There's people that think of velvet painting like, oh my God, that's so awful. Because they think of sad clowns and, and Elvis and, and big-eyed children, you know. But then there's this other camp that, oh, I love velvet paintings because, almost for the same reasons, but they love it for that stuff because it's kitschy. What I'm trying to do is make people see that it can be um, even more than that. I'm trying to open people's eyes and change their perception of, of what they think black velvet painting is. Welcome to Bronsmith Fine Art Foundry and Gallery in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Today we're going to do a tour of the foundry. We're going to show you how bronze sculptures are made. We have a unique facility here because we have a working foundry and a gallery and a sculpture garden for people to view and see how things are done. We start out by doing uh, the uh, enlargement process and the mold making process. Here's an example of a sculpture by Doug Hyde. Uh, this is a small one that we did at first, okay? This is a bronze now, but he had the idea of an uh, Indian lady throwing some baskets up in the air and then talking about all the uh, symbols and the uh, mythology that's in, in the designs of the baskets. So what we do is we take this, we do a digital scan of it, and then make a foam uh, carving, and then we apply clay to it. Then at the end, the artist comes in and puts the finishing touches on it. After this is finished, then we go to the mold making process. That is a system of dividing whatever we're going to cast in two pieces. So that's what Grover's doing here. He's got one piece that's already uh, had one side of the mold done and he's making what we call the pour cone. That's where um, the uh, hot wax is going to go inside of the rubber mold to be poured in and out. Now comes that hot wax, 240 degrees. It's slowly poured over the mold. The hot wax picks up all the fine details in the artist's original sculpture. After several coats, the mold is closed up and a slightly cooler wax is poured inside and out. We then have a hollow wax pattern that we do what we call touch-up. And touch-up is taking some of the original tools that the artist uses to um, create the piece in the beginning, we use those same tools to clean up the seam line or any flaws that might be in there. The next step involves applying actual metal to the ceramic shell. After several coats, the wax is steamed out and they're ready for the bronze pour. As you can see, this will be another hot pour, more than 2,000 degrees. At this stage of the game, we're only halfway through the process time-wise. The second half is the laborious process of cleaning all this up, grinding the gates down, doing the metal finishing, and then finally the patina. Now we're in the uh, finished chasing room. This is where all the sculptures that are cast in pieces are put together. This is where you can actually see the original artist's vision coming together. Milky Way Woman 
depicts a woman in tribal dress holding up baskets amid the stars. It's based on the idea that when people pass, they go to the Milky Way. It's works like this one that earned artist Doug Hyde the 2018 Governor's Award for Artist of the Year. One of the comments people make all the time is they had no idea that it was that complicated. They think that the, the, the mold, somehow a bronze sculpture pops out of it. It's all done in parts and pieces. So uh, this is part of what we want to show at Bronzeworth. We want to show how much work goes into it, how it's really a partnership with the artist. The artist is working very closely with us. Their vision is somehow brought to life here. When, he comes, when the metal comes to Bronzemith, it's an ingot about 15 or 20 pounds, and then we transform that into their vision or their beautiful piece of art. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism.